So hopefully you can see my screen here. So in this part of the presentation, um, we will actually go through four different components. First, we will look at the end user experience with Office 365. And we'll also show the administration user interface, you know, the uh, one-stop portal where you can manage all the different products that are available with Office 365. As you mentioned, you have Exchange, Link, and SharePoint. So, you know, there is this one portal that lets you manage all of your components that you have purchased. And after that, we will go through the remaining part of the demo, um, you know, the remaining part of the slide deck to go through and see the different versions that are available with Office 365 and finally end with uh, pricing and plans. So what you're seeing right now is the one-stop shop for the, for the Office 365 portal. This is the end user view. Now, the one thing to note here is if your users are currently using Outlook, currently using Office Communications Server, currently using the uh, Office Communications Client, it's business as usual because people working in Outlook can continue to work in Outlook with Office 365. People using the OCS client right now can continue to use a new client called Link, which Jesus has talked about in his presentation. This is the user interface for users who don't have access to some of those things. You know, you can log into this with your credentials, but it gives you the flexibility to access the same information from the web as well as from your uh, client machines, which Jesus was talking about as access to all of these services from anywhere. So to start with, you see here from an end user perspective, you see your access to the, uh, your inbox, your calendar, and multiple options for Outlook web access. So I have my inbox open here. As you can see here, this is built off of Exchange 2010, very similar user interface. And the nice thing is you also get your missed conversations through its integration with Link, the Link client. So you can see here, you know, it provides me my regular inbox. I can also see all the missed conversations that I have had with a couple of my colleagues, and it's all provided in this unified inbox view right here. Uh, of course, you have similar functionality. You can go to your calendar, contacts. All of this information is exactly what you would expect in Outlook Web Access. So the second item from an end user perspective is to go back to this and look at SharePoint. So here, there is an option to go sh see your SharePoint site. Now, you can have multiple site collections. Again, we are not going to go into a deep dive of the SharePoint site feature itself. Again, it's regular SharePoint, but then as you can see, you get one-click access from this portal for your default site collection. The third thing that we want to see as an end user is the ability to use Link. Now, if you have purchased Link as part of your plan, you will see an option to install Link from right here. Now, I have a version of Link installed. So as you can see here, Link is the next iteration of the Office Communication uh, OCS client. So you can see um, I can carry on conversations with a couple of uh, my colleagues right here. I can create live meeting sessions. And as you saw, this also integrates with Outlook so that you can track your missed conversations. Of course, you can have uh, YSOR IP calls as well uh, between the two computers. So, so that's the end user experience. The key takeaway here is it's business as usual. Users who are currently using Outlook can continue to keep using that. And you know, users who don't have access to that can also log into this portal to see these um, uh, links to the different sites that you have access to. Now, the next part that we want to go through is the administration user interface. As Jesus mentioned, the admin user interface here depends on the type of products that you have. So in this scenario, I have Exchange Online, Link Online, SharePoint Online, as well as access to Office desktop apps. So based on the products that you have purchased as an administrator, you would see options to manage each one of these guys. Now, for Exchange Online, if I click on Manage, uh, you can see here, uh, once it loads up, I'll be able to manage my uh, Exchange mailboxes. I'll be, I'll be able to manage distribution groups, external contracts, uh, contacts, and email migration. And the nice thing with Office 365 is it seamlessly integrates with your Active Directory objects on premise. So that is a tool that you would install on your Active Directory server, which will take the users that you have created in AD, synchronize them with the cloud, along with their passwords once every three hours. And you can also go and uh, run it um, you know, on an uh, on-demand basis as well. And the nice thing, this is a question that we usually get asked all the time, is there is integration for uh, conference rooms. So your conference room details that you have right now can also be migrated over to the cloud and will be available when users go into the calendar view and Outlook to book uh, meetings. So again, um, we are not going to dive into much of these details here on this Exchange Online interface, but you can see here you have access to users and groups. 
you can have different administrative roles, you can have different user roles, you can also control mails. So in this case, I don't want to save anything. So if you do mail control, you can set different inbound roles, outbound roles. So all the flexibility that you want with protecting your Exchange Online environment is available in this Office 365 user interface. The next option from an administration perspective is to go see SharePoint Online. So in this case, I clicked on SharePoint Online, and the administration that you see here is really a large subset of what you see in the Central Administration Console. And again, I think that's one of the key benefits for Office 365 is by providing you the things that you just need to have access to. Uh, you, as you can see here, you don't have access to backup or restore. You don't have to manage about email alerts, form configuration, logging, and you know all of those. So it basically lets the administrators focus on what's important to solve their business users' needs. So in this case, here's the SharePoint Online administrator experience. So you can manage your different site collection. In this case, um, we have a couple of site collections set up here. So here's the list of site collections. You see a home button here that takes you back to the home page. Um, here is the InfoPath form services where you can go manage your InfoPath forms. Uh, you can allow users to browse and enable form templates. You can set up proxies, uh, which is available here. The next uh, section here is the user profiles. Now this is where SharePoint Online integrates with your on-premise Active Directory server. So when you create Active Directory objects or user objects in your on-premise AD, the, uh, the uh, migration tool or the synchronization tool will take those Active Directory objects and then create uh, user profiles within SharePoint Online for you. So you can manage your user properties here and based on the rules that you set up, your on-premise AD properties will get converted over to your um, SharePoint Online properties. You can manage those user profiles, you can set up policies. Again, this is very similar to how you would manage the user profile service application within your central administration console of an on-premise SharePoint installation. So you can also set up my sites, configure trusted host locations. Again, it's very similar to what you see in the on-premise version. So as you can see here, this is a quick overview of the administration console. Uh, the key takeaway here is you only see what you have access to. Uh, you don't have to worry about backups, restores, and the core configuration of the farm itself. Microsoft takes care of all of that. And all of this frees you up to focus on solving your business users' needs and drive productivity through your enterprise. So with that scenario demo, I'm going to jump back to the slides so that we can talk about the different versions and then see the pricing and the plans.